Alrighty then, in today's edition of Smite, we're going to be playing as the Chinese Saint of War and the God of Sound Effect himself, that is Guan Yu. I'm going to be playing support, supporting this Hercules in this solo queue, and in this solo queue, the team needed me to be a tank. Go figure. <laughs> Which, more often than not, is fine. Sometimes I would like to play the carry myself, but that is the nature of the beast that is solo queue. And whatever the team needs, that's what I'll be. And when solo queuing... I find Guan Yu to be the safest pick, and I'll explain why gradually as the video goes along. There's a few reasons to it. But anyway, the situation, we're leaning against Aphrodite and Fenrir. My job as a support, if you were unsure, is to support and tank shit. I'll be building items that'll let me take more damage than Hercules will. My job is to initiate on enemies, get the attention of the minions and sponge as much damage as possible to make sure that my carry, in this case Hercules over here, can output as much damage as possible without getting beaten up in the process. I also need to make sure that if my carry is initiated on by the enemy, that I punish them for it by means of simple damage, crowd control, and trying to block them off so that I take the hits instead of my teammate. Now, all the stuff I just listed there concerns fighting the enemies, but there are other ways in which you can support a carry. And this is generally where it gets a little more advanced, perhaps. The farm of a tank is much less important than the farm of a carry. It's important that you let your carry get as much of the XP and the gold as possible, because their items and their leveling is much more important than yours. But at the same time, you don't want to suffocate yourself to the point where you just have absolutely nothing. You need to find a nice balance. Sometimes you'll need to share XP, but oftentimes it can be better to let your carry just solo farm, kill the minions by himself in a lane, provided that you can guarantee he won't be in immediate danger of death left by himself. That could be an empty lane. It could be someone there on the opposite side of the lane, also solo farm, just building up their gold next week. But you wouldn't concern yourself with this kind of thing early game. Early lane phase, absolutely, you got to get as much as you can and build yourself up. However, in mid game, it's something that you should consider doing. But we'll come back to that in a second, because Fenrir looks pretty vulnerable. I start in a Metallo Assault to lower his protections, we double dash him for a kill, and we body block Aphrodite as she tries to squirm back to her tower. We get a kill between us, and they were just overwhelmed by the amount of damage we did. My dash is level 2 and cuts through them nicely, particularly when combined with my third ability, which I will explain in just a brief moment. And Hercules dash does some nasty, nasty damage, and I can assume that that was at least level 2 when he cast it on Fenrir. And pushing that minion way past the tower was the biggest mistake I made of this entire game, because Neath ganked from middle, and there's just absolutely no escape in this. I buy Hercules some time to get away, he pulls back to spawn safely, and I bite the bullet. But, that does lead me on to my next point of importance regarding support, which is... Your death is much less important than the death of anybody else on the team. And this relates back to your farm is less important than anyone else on the team. Now because, in theory, as the game goes on, you are going to have less gold and XP than your teammates, you are also going to be worth less to the enemy when they kill you. Getting a kill on you, the support, is not going to grant them as much juicy gold and XP as it would if they killed the carry. And also, it's important that they don't shut down your carries, as they are the danger, they generally need to be kept alive as much as possible. And your job is, of course, to protect them. And if it means sacrificing your life to preserve theirs, you should do it, provided that they are doing their job and farming up properly. If they're worth keeping alive, keep them alive. Now, as I was running back from spawn, I noticed the mid lane needed some help. Fenrir is hanging out there, but he's very low. He doesn't know I'm coming, so I can jump straight on him and kill him with a dash and tell of assault. And as I'm coming back towards Neath, my stuff is on cooldown. I throw a heal up to Poseidon, pop Girdle and Might to try and force her backflip, and only when she backflips do I start using my ultimate. Hit her with all three strikes, dash, kill. Now, killing people as a support is a fairly touchy subject. I'm of the opinion that if you can, give the kill to your carry only if you're certain that he's going to get it. But if there's uncertainty and there's a chance that the enemy's going to get away, then for the love of all that is holy, just secure it and don't let the enemy run away for free. Just because you wanted to go that extra ambitious step to get your carry a little more fed, it's just not worth the risk in most situations because there's a lot of gods in this game with escape mechanics and ways to get out alive. And with that situation where I ganked mid lane, I was the only one in the pack who could physically pick up those kills without letting them get away alive because I had to dive the tower for them at a measly level 6. Like, my teammates would not want to step in that tower at that kind of level. It would kill them. In cases like that, they'll be glad that they got assists and that the enemies have been set back rather than we get nothing out of it at all. Now this fight is just plain ugly, as this Aphrodite has no mana, no health, one ultimate would do it, but it was two seconds too late coming off cooldown, and I'm forced to use it as Neath roots me in a dangerous spot. Now I'm running away from my life, and she ults me thinking it would kill me. I'm left with 100 health. Now Neath is looking pretty weak, 
but I'm looking even weaker. She can one-shot me, yet I have Hercules coming behind her, so I bait her forward. Hercules pushes her into the tower, tower finishes her off, and when he thought she was going to get a free kill on me, she got a death. She overstepped her boundaries, what can I say? But yes, that fight was horrible, because my ultimate was just those scabby little two seconds away from coming off cooldown, and it would have guaranteed killed her. She couldn't possibly use her ultimate to survive it, because she had no mana to do so, and I imagine she probably already popped it. And instead, I had to blow it to counter Neath's root, which just feels like an enormous waste, and that was very disappointing. But, at least I could bait her forward and feed Hercules a free kill on the enemy mid. That definitely helped. And here's another important side of supporting it, that is, giving your carries the buffs. As the support, you start the buff, you tank it for them, you help them weaken it, and then you let them get the last hit so that they get the benefits. This Hercules seemed kind of surprised at my generosity, but in reality, it's in the best interest of the whole team, and I write this to him, you know, it's better in your hands than it is mine, which is true. As the guy dealing huge damage, it's better that he has movement speed, and because he's a physical guy with big auto attacks, he can attack faster. The speed buff is excellent in Hercules' hands compared to mine. I also gave him the cooldown buff. Now I saw that middle lane needed defending as it was open, but I also see that Hercules is being pounced on by Aphrodite and Fenrir in a 1v2. But I like to think that I helped him get nice and fed, as he absolutely shreds Aphrodite and Fenrir's one shot. Now, casting my ultimate here, I'd miss. I'm far too far away. And Fenrir casts his ultimate to help him run away faster. Neath comes over to try and save her buddy, instead putting herself in the danger. I pop a girdle, she backflips, and then, once the backflip is down, that's the perfect time to cast it, as I know I can't miss. I get the last hit on her, and thus I get the kill. And in hindsight, I could have let Hercules get the last hit there, but he was also a critical health with Neath about to ult him. And that is one of those tricky situations where it's a case of, oh, the support gets a kill, you could have let the carry get that. You know, it's 50-50 and in the heat of the moment, that was a very hard one to decide. You can't possibly do it that fast. And with Aphrodite coming back, Fenrir gets a big burst of confidence, but he also takes a big burst of damage for it. As I end him once more. Now then, you might be thinking, you just did a lot of damage to that guy, considering you're a tank. And I'll say, yes I did actually. So, we're gonna talk Guan Yu for a little bit, because if you aren't familiar with his abilities, we'll run through them very quickly. His first ability is an AoE heal. Anybody in a circle around Guan Yu will receive a fairly small but generous heal. And if Guan Yu happens to catch a friendly god in this AoE heal, all of his cooldowns are reduced by two seconds. Very nice, very nice, not bad. His second ability is that short little dash you keep seeing me do. The dash, quite simply, deals damage in the area of effect and applies a small slow to any enemies that you hit. Also, should you connect with an enemy god with this dash, once again, all of your cooldowns will be reduced by two seconds. Once again, very nice. Now his third ability, I'm sure you all recognize this one, is the one with the unmistakable sound of rolling drums. This one, where he spins his blades in a furious but controlled fashion, as the description so says. That blade spinning attack simply does ticking damage over the next four seconds. It does ten ticks in total, and it steals their protections. It lowers their protections by ten, stacking up to three times, so you can lower their protections by thirty, and Guan Yu steals it for himself, increasing his protections by up to thirty. That's three ticks for three stacks. And his ultimate, the Tactician's Advantage. His ultimate is the cone attack, where he pounces forward in a three-pronged attack, striking his blade down on the ground three times in total. Now, each strike of this ultimate will deal increased damage with each successful hit. And the first successful hit will ever so slightly slow the enemy. The second successful hit will silence them so they can't use their abilities. The third one will stun them. Now remember, you have to hit each one successfully to get the increase in status elements. You can't miss the first two strikes and then just hit the third one and stun everybody. Doesn't work that way. This is the reason I've been delaying my ultimate until Neath has blown her backflip. Because if I was to use my ultimate beforehand, after the first hit, she'd just go, oh, backflip. Suddenly, I'm not going to hit my second or third hits, and thus I'm not going to get a silence stun and miss out on a lot of damage. It'll be a complete waste of an ultimate. And that goes the same with anybody with some kind of escape mechanic. A jump, a dash. Try and save your ultimate until they've blown their escape, and thus they can avoid your stun. Now, this move I made over to left lane just sucked, because Hell was retreating towards the tower, I thought I'd cut her off, but nobody followed, so I wouldn't have been able to do the job by myself. After that, I changed direction to try and turn onto the enemy Guan Yu, but he was too far away from me at that point, and I just did absolutely nothing. And as I start this red buff for Poseidon, I ask my team to retreat, because they're pretty far up the jungle, and it's not exactly the ultimate place to be fighting. But despite my request, they decide to go in anyway and get themselves killed whilst I'm not there, so now, do I look like a fool? I'd like to think not, because I did ask kindly for them to retreat. 
but I'm trying to save my friendly Isis here. She just gets melted by the damage and I dash back through. Poseidon's coming up for a potential kill. Whirlpool, tidal surge, no, not enough, where's the Kraken? Misses the low health Aphrodite and she gets away alive. We get absolutely nothing out of it and half the team is dead. Yeah, that sucked. Kinda wish you guys retreated. But what you gonna do? They thought they were big and strong, they must have thought wrong. But whilst the enemies retreat with low health, it does give me a chance to steal their tasty red buff. <laughs> Ideally, I'd want Hercules to take this red buff, but he's not here, he's dead. Poseidon's already gotten and he's backed anyway. I'm the only real candidate here, so I should steal this while I can, prevent the enemies from getting it, and it's not a total waste in my hands because, while I am a tank, I am level 13 and I'm dealing very good damage. And after I've backed and returned to mid lane, Loki decides to initiate on the enemy Hell, who's pushed up by herself in mid lane. The combination of Loki's stun and Poseidon's whirlpool put me in reach of Hell, and I can lock her in place with my ultimate, and this is one of those situations where I know that she's absolutely dead and I do not need to secure this, so I hold off from my dash, Poseidon gets the last hit, and everybody's happy. I need to go back for mana, I am completely drained. However, Poseidon gets picked up in the mouth of Fenrir, so I go back in just to dish out one more heal to them before I head back. I ask them to be careful middle because I don't want them getting killed while I'm away. So I head back to continue buying, and perhaps I can discuss a little bit of Guan Yu building here. So, Guan Yu, support tank, right? Why on earth are you building Magi boots instead of tank boots? Well, you remember how I said at the start of the game that I think Guan Yu's a very safe and solid pick for when I'm solo queuing and a team needs a support. Well, what I mean by that is, Guan Yu is not the same kind of tank as Ymir and Barkas and Sobek. Ymir, Barkas and Sobek have very hard CC. They're all about locking enemies in place and completely manipulating their positioning. Guan Yu can't do that. Guan Yu does not have hard CC besides his stun, which is quite difficult to land given that the enemies can escape it very easily. What Guan Yu has is chase, survivability, bursty damage, protection theft, sustain through his heal. Guan Yu is an aggressive tank, or a carry tank if you will. Someone who can hold his own and survive, but at the same time, he can kill shit if need be. You're gonna have a hard time outrunning his ultimate and his frequent frequent dashes, which if you'll remember, slow the enemy and lower his cooldowns. He can dash a lot. And they get away with barely a scratch left in them, but like I said, the same for myself. Oh dear, enemy Guan Yu, the Aegis. Steel protections, okay, stacks are up, dash through him, heal, ugh, I'm alive, it's a miracle, and now, kite him back into Hercules, Hercules, go fight him, go boy, let me just recall, you can carry on, and be careful, for the love of god, anyway, back to buying, so that's why I buy Magi Boots, you need to get an injection of damage with Guan Yu, because his abilities scale fairly well with magical power, but at the same time, half of his peel comes from being intimidating, and he's deterring enemies with his damage threat. Enemies will be scared to initiate on Guan's carry, because they know Guan's gonna be able to put out some big numbers by himself. But with that being said, you are still a tank at core. You can't just buy magical power items all game, you will need to be able to protect yourself. I like Breastplate of Valor on Guan Yu, because you will need the mana, trust me. You cast a lot of spells. Why? Because your cooldowns are very low. And what does Breastplate of Valor do? It lowers your cooldowns even further. You're gonna be spamming shit everywhere, it'll feel like you're getting a heal and a dash off every five seconds, it's incredible and you'll be surprised how fast your ultimate cools down when you get reduction and you're getting all the successful heals on teammates and dashes through enemies. You'll take a 90 second move and you'll transform it into a 45 second one in the midst of team fights. You'll be able to get two ultimates off before the fight even ends. It's amazing. And whilst we're discussing our shopping list, it's important that you invest in these whenever you can afford to. As a support, you're expected to ward the jungle. You're not meant to ward up the whole jungle, it would cost you a bomb. But you're meant to do your fair share, more so than the carry should have to. Again, your gold is less important, and warding the jungle will benefit the whole team, especially warding outside Fire Giant and Gold Fury. Those are very common intersections and two very important parts of the map, so those are two hot locations for vision. And let me just warn you in advance, my ultimate you're about to see here is extremely messy. I wanted to go on Aphrodite, but her immunity went up, so I changed targets halfway through, and thus I accomplished absolutely nothing with the ultimate, because, you know, if you don't hit all three strikes, it's a complete waste, pretty much. Instead, I'm gonna just have to go in with the blade spin, with frequent dashes and heals that play off each other every time I dash and my heal comes up. Every time I heal, my dash is that much closer to coming back, and my blade spin, for that matter. Just constantly low cooldowns, playing off each other all the time, all the while sustaining, chasing, and doing damage. Damage. However, this entire team fight just did not go in our favor, and Loki actually abandoned us halfway through. <laughs> and yeah, that was just a total failure, unfortunately. 
Partially to blame for my terrible ultimate, although we did get off to a head start, getting off two kills before our team started to go down. By the time I get back up, that Loki who abandoned us, yeah, he was solo farming left lane and got himself killed before we even had a chance to help him out. So now I'm defending left lane, my Poseidon gets rude, I stand in the way to block the shots and tank the damage, which was pretty close because he was one shot away from death. Now Guan Yu is chasing him the whole way through the tower, he decides he changes his mind when he's out of reach, and the left tower goes down. Now I'm here defending this last tower on the left against four enemies. I look across the right side, seeing two friendlies engaging one enemy with a near-dead tower. The enemy they're against is Fenrir, and the tower is one shot. I'm telling them to just dive on that Fenrir and get the tower, because at this level, the tower's not going to do much damage to them, and that Fenrir, if I remember correctly, is pretty behind it, because I was punishing him early game. So they get the Fenrir, they knock out the tower, and that's some consolation for the smackdown they're laying on our left lane here. There's nothing I can do about this. I don't have the health to go in, not even with Poseidon coming here. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to stop the tower from going down. We're going to have to retreat even further, but I do have a tiny bit of health. I just want to harass Neith a little bit more. A little dash through her, a little poke, and a heal to Poseidon. And I will back off to regenerate my lost health and mana. And purchase level 3 Void Stone. Maybe things will start to go in our favor now, right? Maybe. I hear Guan Yu doing the red buff. Not sure how far into it he is. Oh, that thing's nearly dead! Why did you rage, dude? I just basic attacked that bitch once. Okay, I'll take it. We start attacking the Guan Yu with my newly found red buff. I start poking him for 32 damage per tick on Tower of Soul. That's quite a lot of damage. Although, we are pretty deep in enemy territory. Enemies showing up all over the place. I suggest we be careful and retreat. Hercules takes out as a, yes, okay, let's go in on him. Yes, not the best move, because Aphrodite's coming around the back. We now have five people chasing us. Isis comes in. What's she gonna do? She throws down the ult instantly for some reason? Okay, I guess I'll try an ult to lock them in on it, but of course Aphrodite counter-ults me, and that's a complete waste once again. We're going to get Fenrir. So close, Hercules gets him with the Earthbreaker. Herc, don't fight, I'm begging you, just run. Herc decides to fight. Shit, that's not good. The boulder did some nice damage, but he's taking more than he's putting out. And he's turning the wrong way. Why are you still fighting, dude? He's got far too much trust in his sustain, but now he's locked himself inside the blue buff, and as the tank, I don't want to leave him alone. Nasty trade of mine. And of course, I throw a heal out to him. He's not getting out of there alive. He goes down, and now I'm stuck here because I wanted to help him. This is what I get for trying to be a good teammate. I die. We both get killed. <sighs> I just need to learn to abandon ship when I know it's gonna sink. That fight was going down shit creek from the moment it started. Although while I was getting my ass handed to me, remember that there were five of them there. I had my eye on Poseidon in the left lane. Look how far it's pushed, Hercules says. Look at that, we took him two for five for ages and nobody does anything. I graciously remind him that Poseidon just took out two left towers and we got a nice injection of gold and lane presence from it. <clears throat> Our minions are now the Phoenix. That is far from nothing, Hercules. By the time I respawn, fights are instantly breaking out on the left side near Fire Giant. Of course, Fire Giant is hot property at this point in the game. It's the kind of time where one solid team fight will win the FG buff for the one victorious side. I go in straight away on three of them, activating Girdle of Might and casting my ultimate. Aphrodite takes a bunch of damage from him, but not enough. I dash through her. My team are finally starting to show up. The Kraken misses everybody. It was a pretty horrible ultimo there by Poseidon. But Hercules picks her up with a very nice Earthbreaker, flings her right back into his club for a big smack across the face. Kind of making Herc sound like a full-on woman beater right now, but moving on swiftly. It's important to get hell out of this team fight because of her cleanse and AoE heal for her team. She sustains them far too much. I chase her down with slows. Isis cleans her up with a nice spirit ball, and she's dead. That's two down. Unfortunately, our Poseidon then dies, and we're not going to have his whirlpools anymore. Guan Yu clears my ward. I counter ward it. Arr. There can only be one Guan Yu in this game with vision. There's going to be me. Loki's one shot away from death, I try to dash in to save him, but unfortunately he goes down a split second before I connect. I do pick up the Neath, and now this Guan Yu is running away from us. I catch him with a dash of slow him. Hercules sets a nice Earthbreaker to pull him back into place. Spirit Ball has stunned him. My ultimate's off cooldown again, because Guan Yu's cooldown reduction is just wonderful. That is a deicide. Whole team dead. And now we can get this middle tower. This has been quite a turnaround. We were very, very behind, losing two team fights in a row, if I remember correctly. Maybe even three. But we get the middle tower. The options now are Middle Phoenix or Fire Giant. I don't think we've got it in us to kill Fire Giant, plus two teammates wouldn't receive the buff. I think we're better off trying to go for the Middle Phoenix here. Aphrodite has already respawned. I just start attacking her instantly, trying to weaken her. She pops her ultimate, which is what well, win in our book, considering we just did a dash and a tower of assault. 
That's a very small minor victory in our favor. And bear in mind that two of us are magical here. We haven't got big physical damage to kill this phoenix, so I pop a girdle of might just so we can get it down before the whole team respawn and eat us alive. So getting that phoenix was huge, especially after that one team fight. And now I pick up a divine ruin, which is going to reduce the power of the enemy team's heals when I use my abilities on them. If you hadn't noticed, the enemy team has Hell, Aphrodite, Guan Yu, three characters with big team-wide heals. And as a support player with low cooldowns, free run abilities, and lots of ticks on one particular move, Divine Rune is perfect for someone like Guan Yu. This should help us cut them down even faster. And Poseidon is demanding lots of help in right lane. He says there are enemies over there. I start making my way over. The rest of my team are already down pretty low. I have Hercules following me. My waters are gold fury. I don't see them coming up this way. So I'm going to go to the top of the lane. And I see Neith here by herself. So I start going in on her. Hercules pulls her up with Earthbreaker. We've done huge damage to her already before she's even popped a damn backflip. Hercules charges through her. She's within one shot. Resistance is futile at this point. That Aegis is pretty much wasted. Aphrodite and Fenrir come over. And we can also see Hell in the background. As soon as Fenrir jumps, I initiate on him with the ult. Aphrodite counter ults to give him immunity, but I do hit the Hell with it, and he's still taking a lot of damage from it. Hercules Boulder, not quite good enough. The A just blocks the damage, but I clean it up. Now I start making my move on Hell. The Divine Ruin is just completely cutting down her heals. She ain't getting nothing. I pop the Girdle of Might, and Hercules is beating down on her with his red buff as I'm trying to tank the brunt of the damage. I start attacking Aphrodite, but she's too close to the well, and Guanyu's coming up behind. We done good work here. Three down, our whole team is still alive. We can get the right tower and maybe even the right phoenix. Picking up that Neath was excellent because it forced their whole team over to a spot they didn't want to be in while our whole team jumped in on them. And while Aphrodite and Guani do of course come back out to resist, we kind of fight them but we don't really. We're just kind of humoring them. We're not really looking to actually kill each other. The phoenix is starting to pound on me. I feel like I am going to die so I dash out. I've got no mana, no health. I should really go back at this point but I want to get one more heal off to my team before I head back. And we've got the phoenix. Happy days. Loki is also securing the Gold Fury by himself with his lifesteal, which is another plus for us. Now then, I have a lot of gold to go back with, and I start working on a Gem of Isolation. Now, Gem of Isolation on Guan Yu is huge. It's probably the biggest pain in the ass you can ever have to deal with, bar maybe Ares with Gem of Isolation. That's probably the biggest pain in the ass. It'll make my abilities slow the enemies on hit. I could only afford level 2, but remember Loki was of course doing Gold Fury. So I go back to the fountain and wait out the last few seconds, because when the Gold Fury dies, I'll get 300 gold for it, and I'll be able to afford Tier 3 of Gem of Isolation. Any second now. Like, to me, it's only a few seconds after just getting back to spawn, but if Loki was seeing me here, you'd just think I was a lazy piece of shit who was taking it for granted. But Gold Fury comes in, I can afford Gem of Isolation. I'm going out now with a fairly solid build in my hands. I think the majority of this is a fairly solid Guan build. The Divine Rune... Is interchangeable. I mean, it's a very situational line. I bought it because there are three big, big healers on their team. Divine Room was pretty... Uh, it's a necessity for this kind of match. But, uh, of course, it would sell Mark of the Vanguard later. Should I get more gold, I would likely sell it for something along the lines of... Probably a Magi's Blessing, if I'm honest. Or a Bulwark of Hope. I think I prefer Magi's Blessing to it, though. And I spot Hell here. I just start hitting her in the back. And you can see how slow she's moving next to my Gem of Isolation. Just ticking on her. And I'm doing a lot of damage to her now. If my team gets a little closer, I will ult her. Of course, you linked up with Aphrodite, and that's another one of my ults gone to waste this game. Horrible, horrible match for Guanos, but you can see how much this Gem of Isolation purchase has already paid off. That hell just could not escape me from the moment I pounced on her in the jungle. And I popped a girdle up, my heal is down, we're all pretty hurt. Isis has done a really nice ult to mitigate some damage and blow it right back out of the enemies and heal us up, kind of nice. I've run back to try and shake this Guan Yu off the Isis, who's one shot, I'm trying to heal, but she's running away from me. She's safe enough by this point, though. I turn back to Guan Yu, we lock him down, finish him off, and Isis escapes safely. Now I'm running to the left to try and cut off his Aphrodite, I'm going to get a big slow on her with the dash and the gem of isolation, of course. She's locked herself in place with the Aegis. Hercules, Poseidon, go! Jump on her, lock her down, another dash, a heal to try and lower my cooldowns, but I just get destroyed by Fenrir and the Phoenix combined. So I'm dead. <laughs> that was kind of unexpected, I really didn't think I was in danger. But Hercules picked up the Aphrodite with the boulder, looks like he's going to get the Fenrir too, now he's going to run away from the Phoenix. Gets melted. Poseidon, I suggest you run. I actually tell him to go and help Loki at the Fire Giant, and he agrees he's on his way. However... Look at our fire minion shredding the Minotaur after we took down two phoenixes, mid and right lane. Just like that, they do it by themselves. Nicely done, didn't even need our help to kill him. Well then, that's a GG right there. 
I went 12 and 4 with Guan Yu. Like I say, a very aggressive tank, something of a carry tank. He can really take matters into his own hands, and if you're the kind of person who doesn't really trust the people he's with in solo queue and you're forced to go a tank, Guan Yu is a very safe pick, like I say. And that's gonna be it. Hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.